Dr. Bailey, I need to tell you something. Oh, not now, Mal. I know, it'll be quick, because I gotta get to the OR to scrubbing with the chief. Uh, I think you're gonna be mad at first, but I'm about to do something important, and I'm very sure about this decision. And I, I think eventually you're gonna be proud, but, you know, before that, you're probably gonna be like, what did you do? I'm, I don't mean to imitate you. You call that quick? I joined the army to be a trauma surgeon. I report for duty tomorrow. <laughs> And that's how George died. Six women out of 20. Yeah. I hear one of them is a model. Seriously, that's gonna help with the respect thing? You're Christina, right? Patton, Monroe, Krug, Osborne. Which resident you signed to? I got Bailey. Nazi? Me too. You got the Nazi? So did I. At least we'll be tortured <laughs> together, right? I'm George. O'Malley. Oh, oh. We met at the, uh, at the mixer. You had on a black dress with the uh, slit up the side, strappy sandals. And... Now you'd think I'm gay. Uh, no, I'm not uh -huh. gay. It's uh, it's just that, uh, you know, you were, I mean, you were very unforgettable. And, and O'Malley, Yang, Gray, Stephen. Totally forgettable. George O'Malley grew up in a close-knit but traditional family. His decision to enter the medical field was driven by a deep desire to help others, a trait that set him apart early on. Despite his kind and caring nature, George often clashed with his family. His father, Harold O'Malley, a truck driver, had a very different vision for George's future, performing a more practical, blue-collar path. George's brother, Jerry and Ronnie, also embodied this working-class ideal, creating an environment where George's dreams fell out of place. George found solace and a sense of belonging in the world of medicine. He wasn't just pursuing a career. He was seeking a home and a family that truly understood and appreciated him. This was evident throughout his journey at Seattle Grace Hospital. I know plenty, I just don't want to pick one. Georgie's just tired. They working you too hard at the hospital? You know, he works 48-hour shifts. 48 hours, and you enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoy it. Like, what do you do? You know, medical stuff. Come on. Better can get it. I'll make your brothers jealous. Tell them what it's like to be a big-time surgeon. Come on. OK, last night, this is pretty cool. I assisted on truncal vagotomy, and we uh, inflated this. Well, what do you mean? I helped a surgeon. Anyway, inflate this guy's wait, abdomen I, with I, carbon. I'm a surgeon. I'm a surgical intern. The resident or the attending, they perform the surgery. Oh, so, so you don't actually cut anybody open? I mean, by yourself. No, like, the point of being an intern is that you're learning. We watch the surgeries, and the attending asks us questions, and we have to answer them. It's not easy. I have to be on top of my game 100% of the time. It's incredibly difficult. So you don't actually do anything. Yes, I do. You just stand there. No! And watch I the real doctors work. I am a real doctor. No, you're what not. You, you said you just stand there. You said you don't do anything. No, I didn't. We, no, you said I didn't do real anything. Real doctors save you... lives, Georgie. I mean, if you're just standing there. Oh, for God! <laughs> what? <laughs> I won't go home. Just as soon as you shoot your turkey. Before we dive deeper, Let's clarify by what we mean by white-collar and blue-collar professions. White-collar professions typically refer to professional, managerial, or administrative work, often performed in an office setting. The term originated from the early 20th century where clerical workers wore white shirts and collars. On the other hand, blue-collar jobs involve manual labor and are usually associated with trades or industrial work. The term blue-collar originated from the durable blue denim shirts often worn by industrial workers. Hey, you took an oath to heal. You're a healer. Dad's a truck driver. Mom's a teacher. The evening news shows me crossing picket line. They'll outlive me just to pee on my grave. Hospitals are bustling ecosystems with countless roles that keep them running smoothly. Just like red blood cells are vital to our bodies, blue-collar workers, 
cafeteria staff, laundry workers, maintenance crews, janitors, are the lifeblood of the hospital. Without their hundreds of hours of tedious and repetitive labor, even the most skilled surgeons would have nowhere to work. Okay. Then you go first. Go, Sweet. Yeah, do my job. Do my job, haha. They threw food at her. That is just wrong. Fine, you going in. Wages are better. Yeah, enjoy your stimulus, Olivia. In a pivotal moment, George earned the nickname 007 after attempting a challenging surgery. In Season 1, Episode 1, A Hard Day's Night, he faced a complex appendectomy case. Appendectomies are typically routine, but this particular case involved some complications that made it high risk. 50 says he pulls the whole thing off. That's one of us down there. The first one of us. Where's your loyalty? 75 says he can't even ID the appendix. I'll take that action. Okay, O'Malley, let's see what you can do. Here it comes. Scalpel. Scalpel. Oh. <laughs> that fur is trouble. <laughs> More pressure. Human flesh is a tough shell. Dig in. Pickups. Pickups. Clamps. Clamp. That's the bottom. I'm there. Damn, he got the peritoneum open on that. I told you he's gonna pull it off. <laughs> Appendix is out. Not bad. Thank you. Now well, all you have to do is invert the stump into the cecum and simultaneously pull up on the purse strings, but be careful not to. The risk stemmed from the inflamed appendix's proximity to the iliac artery, a major blood vessel. In such cases, inflammation can cause the appendix to adhere to surrounding tissues, making surgical removal more challenging and increasing the risk of unintended complications, even for experienced surgeons. He's dropping. He's choking. Come on, George. Today, pull your balls out of your back pocket. Let's go. What are you waiting for, suction? Getting too low, folks. Dr. Burke. Get out of the way. Pansy ass idiot. Get him out of here. Suction. Clamp. Double O seven. Double O seven, yep. A total double O seven. Double O seven mean license to kill. During the appendectomy, George pulled too hard on the purse strings, causing them to break. This critical error may have severed an artery, resulting in severe bleeding and escalating the patient's condition. The incident highlighted the delicate balance between surgical skill and the unpredictable nature of medical emergencies. Give me a number or else I'm gonna hit you. Murphy whispered 007 and everyone laughed. He wasn't talking about you. Are you sure? Would we lie to you? Yes. 007 is a state of mind. Well, it says the girl who finished first in her class at Stanford. Oh man, it's 911 for Katie Bryce. I gotta go. I should have gone into geriatrics. No one minds when you kill an old person. Surgery is hot. It's the Marines. It's macho. It's hostile. It's hardcore. Geriatrics is for freaks who live with their mothers and never have sex. I've got to get my own place. <sighs> In the early days of his internship, George O'Malley faced significant challenges, most notably during his first solo surgery, which went poorly and earned him the unfortunate nickname 007. However, George's journey from that low point to becoming a competent and confident surgeon is illustrated perfectly in Season 2, Episode 5, in a dramatic and intense moment 
George performs a life-saving surgery in a stalled elevator, demonstrating remarkable composure and skill under pressure. This pivotal scene not only showcases George's growth as a surgeon, but also highlights his resilience and determination to prove himself in the demanding world of Seattle Grace Hospital. Alex! Ventilate. I got it. What do I do? Make a large anterior lateral mid axillary incision in the fifth intercostal space. How, how large? As long as possible. You need to get two hands in there. It needs to be long and deep. Use the scissors if you have to. Okay. But be sure you don't cut into the longer heart. Uh, how can I be sure of that? You just have to be sure. We're not in Kansas anymore. To understand why I believe George O'Malley's death was a fitting end, we need to look at a series of major missteps that marked his time at Seattle Grace. Really These three it. strikes reveal how George's repeated mistakes and poor decisions ultimately led to his Most demise. So it didn't matter enough to her to even talk about. Okay, George, the pity thing? Not good. If you want crappy things to stop happening to you, then stop accepting crap and demand something more. Did you know this guy's fiance left him? Sounds like he dodged a bullet. Yeah, I don't think he's going to see it that way. If she can't love him back the way he loves her, then she doesn't deserve him. You heard about me and Meredith? Well, everyone heard of George. You were yelling about it in the hallway. It must have sucked. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, if, if I made you feel anything like I'm feeling right now. I'm sorry. That's nice to hear. George sleeping with Meredith while she was emotionally fragile was a classic case of terrible judgment. Instead of being a supportive friend, he took advantage of the situation, which not only messed up their friendship, but also highlighted his lack of real empathy.
I washed my hands. I, I went down to the kitchen and I washed my hands. I didn't wash my hands in the bathroom because those girls were staring at me like I was a rodent or something. I was in high school and I was having the naked dream when it was actually happening. I didn't even know they were home. I washed my hands. George dropping the ball on supporting Callie before and during their marriage was another strike against him. His failure to have her back during tough times showed he couldn't handle the commitment and responsibility of a relationship. You have to stand up for me. You have to say, I washed my hands. Dr. Bailey, I need to tell you something. Oh, not now. Oh, no. George's decision to join the military was his last desperate move to prove something to himself. While he thought it was a noble act, it was really just another example of him running away from his problems instead of facing them head on. And I think eventually you're going to be proud, but, you know, before that you're probably going to be like, what did you do? I'm, I don't mean to imitate you. You call that quick? I joined the army to be a trauma surgeon. I report for duty tomorrow. Whoa. Man versus bus. Bus one. Check out the left arm. He's crashing again. What do we got? Look at that roadkill. You might have stepped out in front of a moving bus so he can pull a woman out of the way. He's a hero. Each of these groups wasn't just a bad decision. They were part of a pattern of not quite making the best choices. George's life was marked by a series of missteps and missed opportunities. While his intentions were often good, his inability to consistently make the right calls ultimately led to his tragic end. <laughs> Into the drill. Okay, go in slowly. When you feel a grab, stop because otherwise you're going to be hitting the brain. Okay, let's go quickly. Nice work, Dr. Gray. I'm going to go get some bass and trace for that face. Right, let's get his head rotated. Easy. Welcome back, sir. He had us worried there for a minute. You think he's gonna make it? I hope so. But he really has to make it. Oh, Dr. Sloan. There's gonna be too much tension. Start over and do a layer closure. Um, can, uh, can I ask a question about that? You brought up moving in together in marriage, and I put it off. And now you're embarrassed and you won't make eye contact with me because you feel that I have all the power in the relationship, but I don't want all the power in the relationship. I'm, I'm happy to share it. <laughs> can we just skip this part? Get some formal bicycle so you can redo your patient sutures. I'll totally pretend I didn't hear any of that. <laughs> Women do this to me. I don't do this. Let's get a house together. Sex being the girl, huh? I'm not the girl. What do girls do? Well, uh, we start with a cold shoulder, so you're right on track. And we go to our girlfriends, and we bitch, and our girlfriends say, you want to build a future, build it yourself. I don't need a man to give you that, so you want to buy a house. My house. Huh. You're good at this. <laughs> I hope someone get a love life. I suck at my own. He jumped in front of a bus. For me. What did you do to O'Malley? Excuse me? To, uh, somebody else around here likely to convince someone to join the army and be a trauma surgeon in Iraq? What? The army? What? He said... Charge the paddles to 360. Just call who you have to call and undo this. Thanks, Bailey. A little busy here. Claire, uh, George, George O'Malley. It wasn't my idea. No change? Charge again. Claire! Look, I did what I could to give him a decent education in trauma. I didn't know he was going to go and enlist. He keeps coding. Here's why I opened both pelvic fracture. There's too much bleeding. I'm taking him to war now. He'll die on the table. He needs to go to Andrew if we're, we're going to stop the pelvic arterial bleeding. Sinus check. We have a rhythm. It's barely there, but it's there. 
Let's stabilize the pelvis. I know what goes on in this hospital. I know you messed up from that war, and not in a small way. Get him out of it. Page me if you need me. I've got other patients. How'd you piss off all the women? Our guy to Angio. Angio, he's barely got a pulse. It's now or never if we want him to live. All right, let's move. Sir, I know it's tough, but I'd personally be really grateful if you try and stay alive for the next few minutes. How's this ICP? Oh, uh, we're so as expecting us. I thought you were getting married. We did. Oh, congratulations. You sure want to start your honeymoon on an old war? We're sure. We can't be in here. I'll come and get you in the waiting room. I'll hold his hand until you put him under. It really does make him feel better. Okay. Well, you made a good friend there. I guess that happens when you take a bus for somebody. Even in his final moments, George's actions were a testament to his deep-seated need to protect and help others, even at his own expense. Pushing the woman out of the way of the bus was a final, dramatic expression of his selflessness. It highlighted his enduring commitment to others, even when it meant sacrificing himself. This ultimate act of bravery, while tragic, was in line with the pattern of his life, placing the needs of others above his own safety and well-being. Double O seven. <gasps> It's George! John Doe is George! Does he look at me? Open your eyes! Page Shepard, page the chief and Bailey right now. We have you, O'Malley. You hear me? We have you. We'll fix this. Just stay with us. O'Malley, Shepard, you're not going anywhere. You understand me? BP's dropping. All right, let's put him out now. What happened? Is it her brain? No, it's hyperkalemia. We couldn't control the arrhythmias. The pressure's dropping off a cliff. Give me an intubation tray. Alex. She signed a DNR. Shut up, yeah. She knew this might happen. That's why she signed it. I don't give a crap what she signed. Alex, it's not what she wants. Get a crash cart. Get Karel. I, I look at her. Get a crash cart. Oh, screw the DNR. Hand me those panels. Danny, take over compressions to red back. I got it. One, two, three. And down. Okay. Down. Charge 300. Did you say it? I love you. Clear. I don't ever want to live without you. You changed my life. Did you say it? Make a plan. Set a goal work toward it. But every now and then, look around. Drink it in. George O'Malley's story is a stark reminder of the consequences of failing to address your flaws and take responsibility for your actions. His life and death illustrate how a pattern of not making the best choices, combined with a tendency to prioritize other needs over his own well-being, led to his tragic end. It might all be gone tomorrow.